I'll just wait one second here and see if somebody answers me because there's a little bit of a delay a little bit of de a delay for the live stream here so is anyone there can you still hear me is there still an echo okay this one more time okay seems to be gone all right <laughs> well that's how it goes you know first time first time we just see what happens and we go from there thank you so much um, I think I know what happened there I was playing the uh, video and uh, it was picking up uh, what was going on on the computer at the same time all right, so this is a trial run for me, of course. I've never done this before on uh, um, live stream. So praise the Lord. Glory to his name. Yeah, we'll, we'll be going over some, some scripture today. We'll be talking about the simple things. We'll be talking about the simple things. Um, the uh, Brother Stephen asked me to talk about uh, children and about serving the Lord and and the Lord led, led me a, an interesting route and I'm I'm really looking forward to sharing that with you uh, let me get a couple of housekeeping things out of the way first while we wait for people to come uh, what what we've got going with the website right now is uh, I had a backup that an emergency backup it's, I saw the attack happening on on the website and so I did an emergency backup and I had been wondering if I had actually got the content off of the website and the emergency backup didn't actually work the way that I had hoped and so the content is uh, in the works but I had a secondary backup that I did a few days earlier which did have the whole content so I'm gonna have to go through and manually take each article out and manually insert it into the new website and that way I can expect the code and make sure that we don't have any malicious code in there so that the website won't have any viruses or anything on it because we got hacked guys we got hacked and we're doing everything we can to to make sure that doesn't happen again and if it does Lord willing it won't but if it does happen one more time um, or multiple times depending on the topics that we're covering in the ministry here but uh, when it happens again um, we are prepared for a quick restoration this time uh, simply put I just wasn't ready for this level of an attack and so so now we are <laughs> so now that we know what we're facing and what we're up against um, if you happen to have a web server that has um, that you would like to donate a little bit of space on um, I can set up a uh, automatic syncing deal uh, so if you if you know what I'm talking about by rsync and you know what I'm talking about by Debian or Ubuntu and root access just go ahead and get in contact me at uh, contact at israelreturns.com all right now let's get into the word friends because that's why we're here we're here to worship the Lord and I just want to thank you for being here today let's pray and then we'll get into the word thank you Lord for all that you've done thank you Lord for all that you have done for us glory to your holy name Father, we give you the glory and praise because you are our Lord and our Creator and you loved us first. You sent your Son to this earth for us. You sent Yeshua to this earth to be our Redeemer, our kinsman Redeemer, to set us free from sin and death. And I give you the glory and the praise and I invite you here today. I invite you here, Father. I invite you here. Be here with us as we look at your word, as we put you first in this day that you have set aside. Father, we give you the glory and the praise and the honor. 
in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's take a look at the word. I've got a little bit prepared here that I'd like to share with you. The simple things. A while ago, well, now actually over a decade ago, the Lord spoke to me about um, well, he, he just, just gave me this little little drip of understanding. And every once in a while, if anyone has experienced this, it's kind of like this concentrated pop, and then all of a sudden, you understand. It's the illumination of the Holy Ghost. It's, it's the Lord giving you understanding of something uh, just so that you understand what it is and, and what's going on. But what he told me was, he, he, he spoke to me and said, the complicated things, the hard things, the the things that we do for religious reasons, such as the ceremonial law in the Old Testament and such and such. Uh, not that we do that today, but as an example. He said those are easy to do. He said they're easy to do because we have the instruction manual. We can go through step by step and we can accomplish these things. It may take a little while to be able to, to fully master it. But it's easy to do the hard things in the Bible. But then he said to me, the simple things, on the other hand, take a lifetime to master. Let me give you an example. Love your neighbor. Have you mastered loving your neighbor? I mean really, really loving your neighbor as Christ loved the church, really loving your neighbor agape, not just how I feel, but putting my neighbor first. Have you mastered that? No, there's no one here that has. Only Christ Jesus, when he walked on this earth, showed us what that really was, to love our neighbor. As ourselves and to put them in a position where they're taken care of first and as we walk through our life it's something that we endeavor to learn over and over we try over and over we we attempt to do better we try to do better over and over we push hard we grow and we groan inside of us and and inside we know oh god I just can't quite get this I can't quite put someone else above myself or someone else in a frame where I can agape as opposed to what I feel that I can put them above that I can show them who Christ is through my love for them and to through my agape for them and we constantly fail in these areas and yet it's so simple it's so simple love your neighbor as yourself. How simple is that? A two-year-old can understand what that means, but it takes a lifetime to understand how to... <coughs> excuse me. Wow. <coughs> it takes a lifetime to be able to master these things. And Brother Steve wanted me to talk about children. And the reason why I bring this up is because children understand the simple things of the Word of God. And if you have children today listening to this, I would address the children and say, these things are things that you can understand. Love your neighbor. What that means is, you put your friends first. <coughs> Excuse me. You put your friends first and what they need first. And then you take care of your own. And we put our brothers and our sisters first. And we take care of our brothers and sisters. We do this to show the love of Christ, the love of Yeshua, the love of God in our lives so that we can be a good representative, a good ambassador, so to speak, so that we can be a good 
example of who Christ, of who Mas Mashiach, of who, of who the Messiah is, so that they can look at us and say, how can you love us like this? And we can say, because God first loved me. And that's why we do it. When Jesus was asked, what, are the great, what is the greatest commandment? He said, of course, first love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, all your mind. Depending on what uh, book of the Bible you're reading, it'll be a little different order. But love God first and then your neighbor as yourself. For the second commandment is like unto the first. And all the law and prophets hang on those two commandments that Jesus spoke to us and gave us. And so he tells us that these are the simple things. These are the things that if we can master these two things, we have mastered the entire Old Testament. It's just truly amazing. No picture, huh? Let's see. Anybody else got some picture? I want to get uh, make sure we're all here. Anybody else see me? All right. But to continue, it's the love of God. First you love God, then your neighbor. And these are the simple things of serving the Lord. The simple things, but it takes an entire lifetime to master. These are the things that a two and three and four and five year old can understand because they understand love. They understand what love is. The very first thing a child knows, the very first thing a child understands is the love of their parent to them. And that is why God designed the family this way so that we can be an example to the children to let them understand that we love our children above ourselves and we take care of our children above ourselves and this is something that God designed as an example for us to show our children and to give our children and so a child can understand these things in a, a more powerful and stronger way than even adults do. As we grow up, we get calloused, we get hard, our hearts get very, very hard. The word talks about a stony heart, you know, and as we, as we mature and, and get hurt and damaged in this world and as we have uh, disobedience and sin in our lives and get further and further away from the Lord as we, quote, mature, these are things that we start to, we, we, we stop understanding what love really is because our heart gets hard. But children understand what it is. For we put God first above all. We love Him first. And because we love Him, we walk in righteousness. And because we walk in righteousness, His love can be shown through us to the world. And so to the children that may be listening today, I would say, love God first. Put God first above all. And love your neighbor. Love your friend. Love your brothers and sisters and your family. Put them first. Because that is the will of God. That is how we make God happy in us. That's how we serve the Lord every day. That's how we put him first. I would like to take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1. For the preaching, uh, starting in verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, 
the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. This, this is foolishness what I'm doing right now. To the world it is foolishness. To the Jew, uh, uh, verse uh, 22, for the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. Unto the Greeks foolishness in the sense that a man died and oh it's you know you're a fool if you believe he rose again. But it's true. He did rise again. He rose again and there's so much evidence historically and there's so much there and it's something that we don't really show so much but it's the Lord working in people and he opens their eyes and they say you know what he really did rise again because I know it it's that that touch of the Lord and that's how we understand that he did indeed rise so verse uh, verse 25 because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye, for ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and the things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to not things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption that according to as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. We don't put ourselves up high. We don't do these things, but instead we point to Christ. We point to Mashiach. We point to Yeshua. We point to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we say, you are king. And we say to the world, look, there he is. I found him. Follow me to the King of kings and Lord of lords. And this is something that in age doesn't matter. <clears throat> when we have found the King and Savior, it doesn't matter if you're five years old, if you're 50 years old, or 90 years old, or 102, which is the oldest man I ever spoke to. It doesn't matter because the King of Kings and Lord of Lords is our Savior and Redeemer no matter what age you are. If you're a child, this verse in verse 27, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world, speaking about preaching and how we go about doing things to bring people to the Lord. God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. What are the weak things of this world? When you are a child, you are not strong as an adult. You are considered weak in that you are not fully grown. And as a child, God has chosen you as an example how to see how to serve the Lord. I'm challenging the adults that listen to this. Examine how children serve the Lord. Look at their purity and innocence as they lift up their eyes to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and worship Him in song. And as they see the scripture, they take it right as it is and they don't, they don't get it twisted in their head like we do. They take the Word of God. They take the Word of God and they just consume it immediately. 
and it goes into them and it becomes a part of them. There's no barrier. As adults, as we grow, as we get hard and our heart grows into a stone, there becomes a barrier to the Word of God. And when we read the truth and we see the truth that is there, it comes and it bounces off. And it has to hammer us and hammer us and hammer us over and over and over to get through to us, to get through to our heart. When the truth sets us free, oftentimes it has to break into us before we are truly free. And this is something that, that children don't have to struggle with because their hearts are so pliable and so pure and so innocent that God can literally just speak the word. Just speak the word and they receive it instantly. Not only do they receive it, but they put it into practice and it becomes part of them. And that's why we as adults, we must, we must put the word of God into our children's lives. But God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. God has chosen the weak things of this world to confound things which are mighty. Children walk in faith in a way that most adults don't understand. And that's the challenge, friends. That's the challenge. That we walk in the Word of God. That we walk in the Spirit of God. And that we walk in faith. Matthew chapter 18. Let's take a look at Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 through 5. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of, him, of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted, and become as, a little, as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as the, this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. And whoso, whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. Jesus is telling us that it is our children that we should be trying to understand the, their relationship with the Lord and that we must humble ourselves like a child. A child doesn't assume until they're older, but while they're very young, they don't assume that they know everything. They don't assume that they only know, you know most things, but rather they ask. They say, why is the sky blue? Instead of trying to figure it out. They ask. The first impulse is to ask. And as we grow in, with the Lord, that's our first thing that we should do also. We should say, well, Lord, how do I pray? And we should ask questions and grow. And the child, when the child receives the answer, receives it readily and instantly. And we should also do the same. Let's turn to John chapter 13. Little children, John chapter 13, verses 33 through 35. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. Ye shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, whither I go, ye cannot come. So now I say it, I say to you. And a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. It is our responsibility to love one another as Christ loved the church. And I speak this over and over because when we love one another, when we put one another first, and when we lift up the other person first, then the entire law and prophets can be fulfilled in that 
time of our life, when we put someone first, when we love them above all, when this is done in our life, we are fulfilling the law as Christ fulfilled it. Not, not the ceremonial law, because Christ fulfilled the ceremonial law once and for all. But the moral law, the Ten Commandments, the, the law, love God first and love your neighbor as yourself. And our children already understand this. And Jesus said, if you cannot be as a child like this, then you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. So the children understand this part of serving the Lord. The simple, simple part that we must love God first and we must love our neighbors as ourselves. And the Lord said, if you can't do this, you won't enter into that kingdom of heaven. And so this is something we must also do in our lives. We must humble ourselves and not instantly assume we know the answer. We must seek the answer in the Word of God and through people who we trust and know that understand the Word of God and that God has instructed and taught how to teach others the Word of God. What we do, friends, is we must humble ourselves as children. We must do these things and walk in righteousness and holiness unto the Lord. And that's the first step. That's the first step in serving the Lord. And our children, they've really got a leg up on us in this particular area. I know I keep saying it over and over, but I want you to understand that the child with the soft and pliable heart and the instant acceptance of God's Word and obedience to God's Word is serving the Lord the way that we all should and that we all need to strive for. Let me skip down here. 1 John chapter 2, 20, verse 28. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born unto him. 1 John chapter 3 verse 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doth righteousness is righteous. Simplicity. The simple things. Okay? He that doth righteousness is righteous, even as he, Jesus, is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. Simple things. Simple things. If you do righteous, you are righteous. If you do sin, you are of the devil. Because that's what he did from the beginning. For this purpose, God, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. That he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. Does that sound familiar? For this is the message that ye have heard from the beginning that you should love one another. This is what we must do. Love one another. 1 John chapter 4, verses 4-6 through 6. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. When we humble ourselves, when we humble ourselves and become as little children, then that is the moment in our life that God comes and lifts us up. That's the moment in our life when we become greater because of Him that is in us. 
because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Jesus wants us to overcome this world. He wants us to put him first above all. And he wants us to love our neighbor as ourselves. These are simple, simple things. But it takes a lifetime to learn. We humble ourselves and let God work through us through his spirit. And that is how we can love our neighbor as ourself. We can't do it without him. We can't do it without him in us. And as Brother Steve has said many times, it is through the infilling of the Holy Ghost, through the outpouring of the Spirit as is recorded in Acts chapter 2, that is how we receive the power and the ability to do what we ought as opposed to what we want. This is how it works for us. We receive God in us through His Holy Spirit. And He that is in us is greater than He that is in the world. And that is how we overcome. And that is how we walk with our Lord. One last scripture as I close. 1 John chapter 5, verse 21. Little children, keep yourself from idols. What is an idol? Just a quick moment. An idol is anything that gets in between us and God. Anything that we elevate above God is an idol. So for the children, for the young children, I would say, don't let games, don't let things in your life come before serving our Lord and Savior. Because that's our full duty. As King Solomon said, the whole duty of man is to keep his commandments and serve him. And that's our duty and our, 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 our lot in life is to serve the Lord. But whatever we put above God, whatever we put before uh, God, whatever we put in between us and God, whatever keeps us away from God is an idol. 